Good morning, my woolly friends, and how is everybody on this beautiful spring day? Um, hopefully we're not being fooled by the weather we've had recently. Yes, I did go buy all the plants for my vegetable garden last night, but I am taking care of them. If there's a frost, they'll move under the canopy, so they will be fine. Um, but even though the weather's gorgeous out there, we can still think of Christmas and of trees and decorations and all kinds of good stuff. So April is upon us, so we're ready for a new, um, a new ornament and a new kit, and it's the peppermint stockings. So we're going to be doing a stocking, and this is the one that we're going to be doing. Um, he's called the Holly Stocking, and that's what it will be listed on the front of your kit on your paper right here. It says peppermint stocking, and that would be on page 15 of your book. So you would go there and you'd follow the directions for the holly stocking. So that's one with the holly leaves on it, hence the name. And this is pretty much a straightforward pattern. You'll have your, your front and your back piece. You'd have your stripes, your holly leaves, and your toe and your heel. Those are the pieces you're going to be cutting out of your wool. And I'm going to flip it around, Peter. On the inside, you'll see there's a, um, a muslin lining. That is not included in your kit, so you would need to grab some scraps of muslin. You're not going to need much, just the, the size of your stocking. And you're going to put that in there. Now, that's going to add some bulk to this ornament. That's why he stays open all by himself, if you can see that. To where some, if, maybe if you didn't have it, it might close it up. But you could fill this with candy canes, with greenery, with um, a little gift or something. So it's kind of nice to have it stiffer to where it's going to stay opened up like this. So once you get all your pieces fused onto the front, you're going to start your stitching. And for the toe and the stripes, the holly leaves, you're all going to use the blanket stitch which is a very, you're going to be doing that all 12 ornaments. So you'll get really, really good at it. Um, there are a couple stitches. If you notice, Peter, right here, the black stitches. Are those staples? They're not staples. Sorry, they are stitches. And that's just a straight stitch where you're going to come up at one point and go down at another. That's it. Then you'll do one a little further down. So the straight stitch is very huh, straightforward. Um Let's see, here is our feather stitch again, and we'll go over that again. And remember, the size of your little horseshoe is what's important. Small spaces, you're going to want smaller ones instead of bigger ones. But if they get, like this one's a little off, he's kind of different, but that's okay. Feathers are not perfect, so our stitches aren't going to be also. Across the top here, we've also got the blanket stitch, so you want to be sure to do that. And it looks like Sandy, yeah, she did this one after it was sewn together so that right here at the seams, she comes just right across there and starts her next stitch so it's a continuous stitch around. It was nice. I had staff that were willing to do an ornament for me for this. Otherwise, I'd still be stitching your, your sample ornaments. Um, you will need a machine for this. The other ones you did not because you need to sew the front and the back together. You're going to put right sides together of your wool. You're going to stitch around and then turn it right side out. Now you need to be patient because this is going to be a little more difficult to turn because A, the wool is going to want to stick to itself. It's a thicker fabric and you have essentially three layers that you are turning on your stocking. So don't poke holes in it when you're turning it. Try not to rip it. But um, that's a really cute stocking. It's got a lot of um, a lot of possibilities. Now we've got the white buttons for the holly for the berries and I think these should be red. Now if you want to get technical about it because holly leaves and the berries, the berries are red, mistletoe berries are white. So we have a cross mistletoe holly 
right here. So we have white beads. So that's okay. If you want to put red on, you can buy red buttons and put on there. I want to review real quick our feather stitch. And the important thing to remember is where you have your floss looped because, and I had to look this up again, this is the feather to the, the stitch to the left. So we're coming back to the right. We're going to go down. Well, I can't see your hand. There. How's that? You're going to go down here, and you want to make sure that you've got this loop of floss here because that's what you're going to catch. And you're going to pull through. See how it makes like a little horseshoe? And that makes your one feather stitch. Now we're going to go to the left here. So you want to make sure that you have your loop. Now this, it's when you're doing it this way, so you just kind of want to lay it to the other side. You're going to go down. Okay, it's right about there, so we'll go down about here. And this is going to make a bigger horseshoe. These may not be the size you want, but it'll be easier to see. So you just want to make sure that you, your floss is going to come through the center. So that's going to hold it down when you go over here to do your next one. So that's our feather stitch. We've done quite a bit of that, so you'll get good at it the more you do it. And keep some extra um, fabric or wool or something with your kit so that you can go back and practice that stitch before you do it. Again, I will recommend this book again. There are some directions on the stitches in the back of your ornament book. But they only did one side of the feather stitch, and I thought, okay, I need to know how to do the other side because the first time I did it, it did not work. I went out on the floor and grabbed this book, and this is a very handy, handy book to have. So I highly, highly recommend that one. Okay, the other stitch that you're going to be doing on um, here, we talked about the straight stitch, which is just, there's four of them right here on the heel. Not a big deal. You just come up and go down, and that's all you do for your straight stitch. Now, if you look up here at the center of the leaf, they use a stem stitch, which I guess I have always done the stem stitch as an outline stitch. Those two are very similar, but I'll demo that one for you over here on this one. And basically what you do is you're going to go into your fabric and then you're going to come up about halfway. So your floss is going to, it's like a, a straight stitch, but when you do your next stitch, you're going to go in where you came, where you went down. I started on the wrong side here. There we go. So it's going to be kind of like a, almost a straight layer. You're just going to go down, come up where you went down before. So it's kind of layered, but it's still in a straight line. And that's going to give you a good stem. I mean, can you see that on the stem of a flower that you'd be embroidering and then either French knots or lazy daisies or whatever you want to do. So um, those will be pretty easy. You may be doing that and you didn't even know that's what you were doing, but um, I'll do one more. And you can do them short or long. Now the next one, it's going to be shorter because I shortened it up. So see, you can have long ones or you could have itty bitty short ones if you're doing something small. So this is fairly small, so you would want a small area, so you would want to do your stitches a little shorter than the way I started out. Um, the feather stitch across the top, blanket stitch all over, your straight stitches, and your stem stitches. And that completes your stocking. So have fun with this one, and when you put it on your tree, um, stick candy canes in there, or put some, um, like a little Christmas pick in there, something fun, and hang it on your tree, because you'll get the, the hanger. This is what your kit will look like this month. You don't have any floss in it because 
you have all these colors from previous ornaments. The red is your stocking fabric. The solid, looks like the solid green here is going to be for your toe and your heel. Here's your holly leaves, or you can flip-flop these however you want to. I think there's probably enough. And here's the fabric for your stripes, your buttons, and your twine for the hanger. So, Peter, have you seen any of the completed stockings on any of the pages yet? No, <gasps> I don't think so. Uh-oh. I know have some you? of you are doing them. I've not seen the pictures, so I want to encourage you to um, post your pictures of a finish. Even if you're partially finished, go ahead and post a picture. That's always encouraging to all of us that, you know, work so hard to put these together, that you're enjoying it, that you're completing them, and you'll have a work of art on your Christmas tree. And then for those who haven't started yet, they'll go, oh, golly, I need to get going on these. And if you do them month by month, they don't take long. You could do this while you're sitting watching TV, which is how I would do it. And I'm one of those who haven't done them because I keep my book and everything here at work because I'll forget it the day that I have to do a video, so I won't know what to tell you guys. So um, <coughs> have fun with these. Post your pictures. Let us see how you're doing with them. And if you have any questions... Put it on the bottom of the, in the comments, or else, um, you know, stop in here at the shop or call us. I'd be happy to come out and help you and um, get you going on these so you'll have some beautiful ornaments this Christmas. So enjoy the weather. Enjoy the flowers. I'm sorry if the allergies are causing problems with all the pollen and everything flying, but spring is here and summer's coming, so we need to enjoy this. So have a great day and happy stitching.